Broom Street. It runs through Soho, the Lower East Side, Nolita, and Little Italy. But it's these two blocks between Elizabeth and Mulberry Streets that have been attracting food lovers. There is a case to be made that this little strip is the most Instagrammable street in New York. But does Instagrammable food equal good food? I talked to Matt and Conrad from Chacha Macha about the role social media has played in their launch. They opened less than a year ago and have already become a fan favorite. Like Room Street kind of being like a center of all these neighborhoods, is that kind of why you picked the location? Yeah, I mean it's an up and coming neighborhood, it's super cool. I, we really think that it's a beautiful street. Do you like the whole Instagram aspect? Yeah. I mean it's a super powerful tool. You get to reach out to all of your customers at one time and tell them exactly what you want them to hear about your brand, your company, your products. It's also really cool because you get to kind of see what your fans like. They really like seeing photos of soft serve and soft serve has been like a big part of what we do here so it's kind of cool seeing what they like and what they don't like as much. A lot of people do come in here and they're from out of state and they'll say like they saw us on Instagram and that like brings people in. Like we love we love seeing people come from all over the place to try matcha for the first time. So what is matcha? Matcha is um, stone ground Japanese green tea. So it comes from the same plant as green tea, but the matcha plants are, are shade is put over them and they're grown for an extra four weeks. And that's when all the antioxidants and chlorophyll build up. And then they stone grind all of the top finest leaves into a powder. So you actually ingest the tea leaves. So one cup of matcha is equivalent to drinking 10 cups of green tea. So I've got a whole matcha spread here. I've got a coconut latte. And I do this beautiful latte art. Mm. Ginger turmeric latte. I would chug that. Mm. Oh, that is so great and refreshing. So this like tall, leaning tower of matcha fruity people is just kind of like begging for an Instagram. So often you'll see people kind of holding in front of their logo. So the space here, even though it's kind of small, it's very versatile. They've got uh, whitewash walls, they've got a live green wall, they've got their Cha Cha Matcha logo back here. The branding here is pretty on point. They've got their Cha Cha logo all over. The bathroom's actually pink too. They've got cute little phrases like, thank you so matcha, like matcha gracias, crazy palm tree seating. They've got these wonderful pink tables. Everything's great for photos. So after all this matcha, I think I'm ready for my next stop. After consuming a week's worth of matcha and froyo, I headed down to Seymour's, a casual restaurant that specializes in seafood. Seymour's is known for its year-round summertime feeling. The airy dining room is great for dining out with a group of friends, they play hip-hop all night, and these beautiful bay windows let in lots of natural light. So I've seen these dishes a ton all over social media and Instagram. The fish taco is definitely calling out to me. I'm told this is dog fish. Okay, I'm gonna try a taco. Mmm, crispy fish indeed. It's got a great crunch. The guacamole is awesome at the bottom. So poke is definitely having a moment right now. You see it all over the city. It's traditionally from Hawaii. Um, it's usually with some green chili, you know, made with tuna. Here they add some avocado, some ponzu, and some peanut, and it's got really great uh, textures and flavors. Mm, poke is seasoned very nicely. Cardinal sin, I forgot to take a photo of my food before I bit into it, so let me do that. I tried to save a bit of room for the next stop, Mimi Cheng. It's run by sisters Marion and Hannah. I wanted to talk to them not only because of their delicious dumplings, but also ask them how Instagram affected their second opening. We're such a visual generation. I, for one, would rather much see a delicious looking picture or video of a dish rather than a description. So I think that that's why Instagram in particular is so great for restaurants and companies that sell something visual. So for us, you can see, okay, if you come and eat here, this is what you're getting. This is what the experience is like. So customers are able to see what it's like to come without even visiting, and that makes them want to come again. I love the geotag part. You can yeah. just look yeah. into a restaurant, the atmosphere, the environment, the dishes, and yeah. it's great that it's from different people's perspectives, or some people have such an artistic eye and take these most beautiful pictures, and some people have a more candid shot, so yeah. it's cool. So these are the uh, Mimi Chang's classic dumplings. It's a recipe from their mom. It's zucchini and chicken, and these are the hometown chili noodles, uh, which look so good and smell great. And this spread is basically begging for a gram, so I might as well. A little sauce. Mm. That's really great. The spice is kind of nice. It's got a nice kick. It's got a really nice crunch, kind of flaky on one side and boiled on the other side. So these are the hometown noodles. They've got bean curd noodles, some pork, spicy chili. Uh, let's give it a try. Great. They've got like, this nice like, kind of bounciness to it, if you will. Um, and with the beef, it's a like, great mix of textures and flavors. 
a little cold, a little hot. Kind of making a mess over here. All the food we had today was not only photogenic, but delicious. So in the case of Broom Street, it seems that vanity really does equal quality. For more Eater video, click here. Haven't, haven't gotten that much smoke since college.